Council of the City of Norfolk is now in session. Would you please stand? The opening prayer will be given by Imam Vernon Fareed. Vernon, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. And then please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. We call on the great creator of all to help us with the affairs of this wonderful city of Norfolk. We are in need of strength to do the best, what the best in our nature encourages us to do. We are in need of wisdom to help us ascertain the right course of action for moving our community forward. We are in need of vision to see far into the future so as to ensure that the decisions made now will be healthy and beneficial for generations to come. O oh, Creator, we pray for your mercy and blessings on those who are responsible for leading our community into a more prosperous and productive life. We understand that we have a role in our destiny as human beings, but we also understand that all power and decisions ultimately lie with you. We therefore put our trust in you, and we seek your indulgence this evening during this city council meeting. Bless those citizens who have left their homes and come here with the best interests of this city at heart to share their ideas, opinions, and positions on matters that affect us all. We pray that you will cause justice, peace, and wisdom to dominate this respectable gathering, and that you will grant us the best possible outcome. We humbly ask for these things in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming down. The clerk will call the roll, please. Mr. Burford? Here. Mr. Protegiru? Here. Mr. Riddick? Here. Mr. Smeagol? Here. Dr. Wibley? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Mr. Wynn? Here. Mr. Frame? Here. The motion is to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Burford? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Norfolk City Council Chambers. We're glad to have you here, all of you. Thank you for coming out tonight. For those of you who do not regularly attend our council sessions, we have a process which we follow for the meetings, and the process we'll follow tonight is the first thing we're going to do is take up the public hearings. There are several of them on tonight's docket. There are five of them. And then we'll move directly to the regular agenda, and there are seven matters there which we'll uh, take up as well. We'll vote on all those matters just the way they are numbered on the printed docket. At the conclusion of our regular agenda, if any member of the public would like to address the City Council on a non-agenda item, that's something that's not on our printed docket, you'll be given that opportunity. All you, ha all you have to do is uh, sign a slip of paper, which the clerk has made available in the lobby behind the Council Chambers before the, before the meeting began, and five or six of you have elected to do that, and we're glad to hear from you there. Um, before we begin the formal meeting, though, I do have a couple of ceremonial matters. And the first one is with Coach Elliott, and uh, it's a proclamation for Dream Girls of Virginia. Coach, want to have a stepped up to the podium, or you can bring anybody with you you'd like. How about the whole team? Be good. Okay. okay. Come on, gang. Please. Get in tight. <coughs> this side, too. We're glad to have you down here. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Sure. Proclamation reads, whereas Dream Girls of Virginia's senior softball team is a self-sponsored team which began in 2008 and is the only 50-plus senior women's team in the Hampton Roads area, whereas Dream Girls of Virginia is comprised of a group of energetic ladies ages 50 to 62 who have a common love for the game, whereas with coaching from <coughs> Hall of Famer Earl Elliott, Dream Girls has become known as the team to beat from Virginia as they have won the Eastern Region Championship for the last three years and the National Championship held in Phoenix, Arizona for the past two years. Whereas in February 2011, Dream Girls capped their season by winning the Tournament of Champs, Champions held in Polk County, Florida, and earning the tournament rings. Whereas Dream Girls aspires to continue to travel across the country in the hopes of becoming and remaining champions at more and bigger tournaments. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, with the City Council concurring, to hereby recognize and congratulate Dream Girls of Virginia for the many successes the team and <clears throat> the team has achieved together on the regional and national level, and wish you many more victories in the coming year given under my 
hand and coach let me give this to you and we'd love to hear from you congratulations on this tremendous success Sure. Thank, you. Thank you for coming down. I want to know where the Hall of Fame coach is. There it is. <laughs> That's what I want to know. <laughs> here, y'all know you where the stay here. Do we get all the old ladies are? Because these ladies don't look over 55. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to say one thing before yes, we have our seats. We want to thank the city council, Mr. Riddick, for <laughs> making this all possible for us. We thank you for inviting us. We do appreciate it. Amen. We, we also would like to say if there's anyone that can help us in a financial way, please, please get in contact with us. We need, we need the support of the city. Amen. We need the support of businesses out there because we have a lot to do. We have a lot to accomplish, and we just need some support. Thank great. you. Well, okay. thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you for coming down, and congratulations on your great success. And we sort of bask in that as well. So Let's sit down. thank you. Let's thank sit you. Down. Great. Yeah, thank you for coming down. Thank Good you. Job. Okay. Now we have another proclamation for National Telecommunicators uh, Week. And Mr. Rogers, Jim, Mr. Rogers, James Rogers, Director of Emergency Preparedness and Response, will receive that as well. James, how are you? Hello. Okay. This reads, whereas dedicated telecommunicators, dispatchers, and 9-11 call takers daily serve the citizens of Norfolk by answering their calls for police, fire, and emergency medical services, and by dispatching the appropriate assistance as quickly as possible. Whereas professional telecommunicators work to improve the emergency response capabilities of our communication systems through their dedication, hard work, and participation in ongoing training and other programs. Whereas these telecommunicators provide a critical service needed by all citizens, and whereas these professionals need and deserve the informed support of our community to continually maintain and improve the quality of public safety dispatching services, whereas the City of Norfolk has designated the second week of April as the time to honor and recognize our telecommunicators and the vital contributions they make to the safety and well-being of our citizens. Now, therefore, I, Paul Frame, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, do hereby proclaim April 10th through the 16th, 2011, as Norfolk Telecommunicators Week in the city of Norfolk, and urge all citizens to make note of this special week and give due honor to our city's telecommunicators. Given under my hand this 12th day of April 2011, Mr. Rogers, good to see you back over here in City Hall. It's great to, be back. <laughs> great to be back. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure, good to have you back. James. Thank you so much. We'd love to hear from you. Good evening, Mayor Frame. City Council members and City Manager Mr. Jones, on behalf of the men and women who work in the Emergency Communications Center, thank you for the proclamation and recognition of National Telecommunications Week. This group of delegated men and women are represented here today by Mr. Anthony Costello, and I've brought a group of telecommunicators with me. Uh, these folks staff our 911 Center 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year and is operating one of the busiest 911 center call centers in the Commonwealth. Uh, you are uh, actually doing nearly 650,000 calls a year, um, emergency, non-emergency administrative calls. It is such a privilege for me to be involved with this wonderful group, and I appreciate the council and city manager's um, recognition of the 911 center and its staff's vital role uh, for public safety in the city of Norfolk. And I can tell you, I sleep very well at night knowing this group of folks behind me are here. Thank you, and I appreciate you, and we are all safer for their service. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Tough business you guys did. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the ceremonial portion of tonight's agenda. We'll move to public hearing one, please. Public hearing one scheduled for the state pursuant to action of council on March 22, 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of Chesapeake Jacks by Michael Mather to amend section 10-10.8 of the zoning ordinance of the city of Norfolk to allow establishments for the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption by special exception in the East Beach Harbor District and for a special exception to operate an establishment for the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 4317 Pretty Lake Avenue and by 4-0 vote, Planning Commission recommends approval. Okay. There's no one here to address the council on this matter. There are no questions. You've looked at the... 10 o'clock. Yep. 
We'll call the roll, please. I have two ordinances, Mr. President. The first is an ordinance to amend Table 10-10.8 of the Zoning Ordinance so as to permit establishments for the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption in the East Beach Harbor District by special exception. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. The second is an ordinance granting a special exception to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption on property located at 4317 Pretty Lake Avenue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Thank you. Public hearing two, please. Public hearing two scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on March 22, 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of the city of Norfolk to amend section 11-51 of the zoning ordinance to create a requirement for a development certificate in Broad Creek Gateway Overlay District and to allow a gas station sales only by special exception. And by 4-0 vote, planning commission recommends approval. Okay, there's no one here to address the council on, on this matter, but I understand that yes, I the vice mayor. Mr. President, I respectfully ask that we uh, continue this one. Uh, okay. There are some architecture, uh, act, some architecture issues that we need to deal with here, as well as uh, making sure that the uh, things that we talked about in the meeting are adhered adhe to. Continue generally? Um, or two weeks? or We'll say two weeks. All right, well, can, can the motion then is to continue for... Two weeks, we'll be, we'll be back in two weeks, right? Correct. Exactly. Yes, okay. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing three. Public hearing three scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on March 22, 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of the city of Norfolk to amend the zoning ordinance to amend chapters 2, 3, 11 11.7, 15-5.1, 16-8.1, 25, and 26-4, and table 7-6, 8-6, and 25 to make adjustments and corrections. Again, there's no one here to address the council on this issue. If there are no questions, please call the roll. I have an ordinance to amend and reordain certain sections of the zoning ordinance of the City of Norfolk so as to make adjustments and corrections. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Frame? Aye. Public hearing four. Public hearing four scheduled for this day pursuant to action of the council on March 22, 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk on the application of NRHA for a change of zoning from C1 limited commercial district to R12 medium density multiple family district and the Bayfront residential parking overlay district on property located at 1201 West Ocean View Avenue. The Planning Commission on a 4-0 vote recommends approval. All right. There's no one here to address the council on... Uh on public hearing four, are we ready to vote? Everybody's good? Okay, call the roll. I have an ordinance to rezone property located at 1201 West Ocean View Avenue from C1 to R12. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. Public hearing five. Public hearing five is scheduled for this day pursuant to action of council on March 29, 2011 under state law. Public notice having been inserted in the local press by the city clerk to hear comments on a lease agreement between the city of Norfolk and Verizon Virginia, Inc. On Ann Montague. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. My name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. Does this lease agreement mean that we're finally going to get Fios in the city of Norfolk, being that Chesapeake and Virginia Beach and everybody else I, got I it in Norfolk? I, I wish it did, but I don't think that's what it means. I think, Anybody? I think Fios is coming. Yeah. I, I, this is unrelated to Fios. That uh, anybody wanting to provide provide Fios would be embraced by us. Yeah. That we've not had. We're with you. Any application? Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The answer is no. Right? Yeah. yeah, this doesn't have anything to do with it. Not in this lifetime. <laughs> All right, call the roll. I have an ordinance approving a lease agreement between the City of Norfolk Lessor and Verizon Virginia Inc. as lessee for the lease of certain city-owned property and authorizing the city manager to execute the lease agreement on behalf of the city. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R1? R1, Mr. President, is uh, a matter of a public hearing um, 
on the application of the city to amend the general plan of Norfolk to designate areas appropriate for transit-oriented development. And the motion is to continue to May 24th? The motion is to continue to May 24th. Right. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R2? An ordinance accepting $75,000 from CEI Development LLC and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the funds for creation of public art for 18th Street Hampton Roads Transit Facility. Yes, okay. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Protegiro? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigo? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R3, please. An ordinance approving a settlement agreement with Clark Investments, LLC, and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of $1 million from the Land Acquisition Revolving Fund for the acquisition of the interests, if any, of Clark Investments, LLC, in approximately 20 acres of the East Ocean View Beach and the public beach access and in various streets in the Ocean View area, and appropriating $3,250 for the title insurance costs. Uh, <coughs> Dan Montague? Even again, my name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. About 10 years ago, my wife's aunt, uh, her, her uh, settlement, uh, her estate settlement uh, for her property in, uh, on 25th Bay, you know, uh, became official. And anyway, NHRA confiscated, you know, took the land and everything, you know, because the, well, Councilman Wright wanted to redevelop all that out there. And so, anyway, she only got $38,000. Her aunt only, uh, estate only got $38,000 for an acre of ground with a house on it at 25th Bay. And the thing about it is, if the uh, uh, people that they were dealing with, well, the, the law firm was in Princeton, West Virginia, and he had no idea of what that property was worth. But and thirty-eight thousand dollars for an acre of ground out there in East Beach, you know, uh, you know, it's ridiculous. But see, the thing about it is, though, at, at, at least the people that you're dealing with now do know the value of the property around here. And but uh, like I say, it still bothers me, you know, that NHRA got that piece of property for thirty-eight grand. Thank you. All right, Dan. Ellis James. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Jones. My name is Ellis W. James. I reside at 2021 here in the city of Norfolk. I thought a lot about whether or not to say what I'm going to say to you in a moment or two on this item. I do want you to know that I'm highly offended as a lifetime resident and a taxpayer of the city of Norfolk to have been put through what our city has been put through at some cost, and especially ironically at a time when we slid into an economic downturn, I find it reprehensible that any person who resides in Hampton Roads, especially on South Side, would try to squeeze the city over this particular kind of situation. I'm not naive, as I tell you so often. I do fully understand what bind the city is in and that we hopefully will be able to extricate ourselves from this situation legitimately and forcefully, and I hope, Mr. Mayor, that before one single red cent is paid to this individual, that you have it fully in writing completely across the board that he renounces any kind of option, ownership, or whatever uh, with regard to this matter. And I do understand why you're coughing up a million dollars, but I'm not happy. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you, Mr. James. Okay, call the roll. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burford? Well, I'm going to take a few minutes and have my two set because uh, <clears throat> I still, to this day, I'm bothered by this. And I mean, and, and for me, it even further added even, even further insult to see um, $3,250 for title insurance, you know, when we don't, still don't know who has clear title. You know, so to me, uh, uh, you know, to give a million dollars um, away during this time um, and not fully understand uh, the ramifications that, that are associated with this. For me, if we're saying that this person owns the property and we're buying it for, from him, uh, then to me, there are taxes associated with that. So what does he owe us? And so if, if, if indeed we're buying this property for him, I would, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm just not, I, I'm just not comfortable with what, 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 what we're doing. So there's no way that I could vote um, uh, yes to something that I'm, uh, I, I fully have not gotten an explanation uh, for to this date. But there, there's, 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 I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen it. Either you own the land or you don't. If you own the land, we're buying it, you know, and if we are buying it, then again, if we go back, then you owe us something. But if you, if, if we, if you don't own the land, why are we paying you a million dollars for it? You know, I still haven't gotten that answer yet, so no. Mr. Bertagero? Aye. Mr. Riddick? No. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? I agree with Mr. Ellis. I vote aye, though. Ms. Williams? Mr. Ellis, I agree with you, and I agree with you. Um, Mr. Burford, I have a question on the $3,200 for title insurance. Is that our owner's, is that our owner's title insurance? Uh, yeah, yes, that's right. Uh, so that protects us in the future if there's a, any other person out there who claims that they have right, ownership that, to the property? Right, right. That's what title insurance is for, yes. Okay. But do we know that? This. Well, the title insurance covers us in the event that there's any other claim against this particular property. This is what we're paying for our policy of owner's title insurance, and it's only paid one time, and it covers us for the duration as long as we own the property. So if anybody else out there pops up and says, oh, well, you know, my Aunt Mitty left me this land, then they're just, you know, that's what our title insurance covers. But I, I, to me, it's a million-dollar excedrin because it gives me headache to... But I vote aye. Mr. Wynn? I also agree with the people that are doubting this, uh, but on advice of counsel and the potential of spending close to that amount of money on legal fees and still not knowing where we come out, and also to give comfort to some of the people at Ocean View that have been through a lot of angst and in and out about what they can do or can't do, I vote aye. I'm going to say again on the record, you say legal fees, and we have attorneys in-house and so if this is something that we need to litigate, why wouldn't we litigate this in-house? But they're not why, free. Why do we have to go out and seek counsel outside okay. of this, 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 this uh, building uh, if we feel that uh, there is an issue here? And if it's not clear, then we, we need to, uh, again, our job is to protect the coffers of the city. Mr. Frame. Aye. All right, our four, please. An ordinance approving and authorizing the conveyance of the 20 foot utility easement to Hampton Road Sanitation District relative to certain property bounded by Mayflower <coughs> Road and Llewellyn Avenue and a variable width utility easement relative to certain property bounded by Mayflower Road and Carolina Avenue and approving the terms of the deed of easement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. R5? No, he's not here. An ordinance approving an agreement with the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Transportation for the design and construction of the citywide signal retiming phase two project and citywide traffic signal cabinet upgrade project and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of funds for said projects in the amounts of $500,000 and $300,000 respectively subject to and in accordance with the terms and conditions of said agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagol? Aye. Dr. Wibley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. 
R6. An ordinance accepting a grant award in the amount of $450,000 from the National Preparedness Directorate, the United States Department of Homeland Security 2010 Port Security Grant, and appropriating and authorizing the expenditure of the grant funds in the amount of $450,000 to purchase a fire rescue response boat for Norfolk Fire Rescue. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burfitt? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smeagle? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? This is a big deal. I mean, uh, when we've been after uh, a fire rescue response boat for years here. I mean, and uh, with all the shoreline that we have, this is really a good day for us. I mean, I would, I, uh, R7. An ordinance approving the Slover Library Completion and Operation Agreement. Dispense with the charter requirement for reading the ordinance and adopt. Mr. Burf? Aye. Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Smigel? Aye. Dr. Webley? Aye. Ms. William? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. I have one additional item, Mr. President. Okay. It's a resolution caption a resolution re, a resolution appointing or reappointing 23 persons to one board, two commissions, and one authority for certain terms. Adopt the resolution, Mr. Burfitt. Aye. Mr. Protegiru? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Riddick? Aye. Mr. Samigo? I just wanted to say, um, Mr. Crandall, this is the appointment to the Environmental Commission. So, aye. <laughs> Dr. Wibley? My only concern, did anybody else have any angst about the fact that we have a 12-year limit and now we're going to allow that not to be, um, you know, that we're, we're going to no longer require that? I mean, I, I think Mr. Barnes has done a fabulous job and I want to keep him on, but, you know, it's kind of like we make this rule and then we say if you want to stay, because I have some people that have wanted to stay on boards and thought they didn't have an option because it had been 12 years. Um. Uh, Dr. Wibley, we talked about that very briefly before you came in. Oh, okay. Sorry. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. So, so they're, they're, <laughs> you snooze, you lose. They're lifting of course, the limit. I was locked out. That's why I couldn't get you, we, we locked you out, so you couldn't, <laughs> couldn't be there. You but couldn't weigh in on the issue. I, I think it had to do, uh, do as much with Willie's, uh, with Mr. Barnes' um, outstanding contributions over the years, over the many, many years. And that's not to... That's not to um, you know, to say that the other folks who have served 12 years uh, haven't served, you know, admirably as well. But this okay. this very rare occasion, we thought it would be worth doing. So I vote aye. Ms. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wynn? Aye. Mr. Frame? Aye. And that's all I have, Mr. President. All right. There are, that concludes the formal portion of tonight's agenda. We are.